Well, Andre Diller goes down with an injury. I'm not sure what the duration of the injury will be, guys. I, I haven't really heard anything about medical testing yet or anything like that coming back with results. But I think it's pretty safe to assume he's going to be out for quite some time, whether it's the entire season or not. And probably tends to lean towards the entire season. All right, guys. Uh, second time this week, guys. Let's talk offensive line, I guess, because, hey, why not? All right, y'all. Let's get it. What's up, Eagles Nation? What's going on, NFL World? How you doing, Division Rivals? This is Steven Heider with Gate City Sports Channel. The Sports Channel where the cerebral NFL fan comes for about 10 minutes of daily content. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whenever it is you get around to watching us. Once again, guys, my name is Steven Heider, and this is Gate City Sports Channel. All right, y'all, so today's topic. Man, <laughs> Andre Diller went down with looks like a bicep tear of some sort, guys. Uh, I, look, I wish the young man the best of luck. But I'm not going to sit here and act like this doesn't put our front office and our coaching staff in a very peculiar situation. Because now we're going to be waiting for year three to see what this kid has. And I, I got to be honest with you. My whole argument about, you know, the whole thing about letting Dillard play is, is that, yeah, he's not going to be better than Peters this year. But at some point, you have to see if the underlying talent is there and if we can develop it into being a perennial pro bowler or at minimum serviceable football player. And we won't know that until you get this young man in live practice drills and live games doing things with first team reps out there against real competition, learning and growing. That's probably not going to happen this season. And that's disappointing, guys. I mean, I don't know what else to say that other than I'm disappointed. In terms of, like, the starting, you know, offensive line, to be honest with you, we might have honestly gotten better. Like I said, I think Peters right now in his career compared to Dillard is further ahead. I mean, come on. So if the supposed lineup, and I have some footage to show you to where I might have some concerns and doubts about how they're going to shuffle this, but if it turns out to be that Peters comes over to left tackle, which would seem like the most reasonable thing to do, right? And then you plug in Matt Pryor at right guard, Assuming those five guys that are now on the line, so you would have Peters, Suamalu, Kelsey, Pryor, and Johnson. If those five guys could relatively play the majority of snaps this season, you got a decent starting offensive line. I'm confident in that offensive line. I mean, yes, there's concerns here, guys. I mean, come on, man. We, we got to be reasonable. <laughs> I really hope Jason Peters plays 16 games and can get through a, you know, a big-time run in the playoffs, but... You know, it's Jason Peters. He is 38. I mean, I have some hesitation believing that's going to happen. But, you know, I mean, it's probably a pretty good idea that he's back with the Eagles right now because could you imagine if we didn't make the move to bring Peters back with the idea of, hey, he can play right guard if we need him to, and if in a pinch, if something really goes wrong, he can play left tackle for us. I mean, you don't know. I mean, Peters could have been picked up and signed by another team, I and mean, we could really be in a real peculiar situation right now. I, it could be worse than what it is. I will say this. I always felt that Matt Pryor was probably better at right guard than Peters was going to be, although I, I said that if anyone can make the transition from left tackle to right guard, it was Jason Peters. He's just that kind of phenomenal athlete. However, putting him at back at left tackle where he's got, you know, 15 years experience, basically, or more, it seems like a, a layup to me. I mean, it makes sense. I understand why we would do that. I mean, I think Matt Pryor is probably the better right guard anyways, and I think Matt Pryor is he's good on his feet. You know, the question with Matt Pryor, though, is, as I was watching film from yesterday's practice, guys, this is what I saw. Real quick side note here, guys, I just wanted to add in, this looks like a run blocking or like RPO type, you know, kind of working drill here to me that, Looks like Peters is really serving as a guidance role to Pryor here. Just, I wanted to make that known and state it because I realized I didn't really mention any of that. I'm not an offensive line coach, guys. Um, I know how to evaluate offensive line. I've definitely watched drills from the offensive lineman before. But I'm not like a, a big offensive lineman guy. It's, it's just not my forte, man. I will say this. To me, that looks like you're training Pryor up. So playing a two-point stance, well, it's not even really a two-point stance, to be honest with you, but you're, he's basically in a stance that a tackle takes. And 
that seems like you're working on those basic releases, that basic release off the line of scrimmage as a tackle. That's what that drill looks like they're working on to me. And I'll have to have Jalen Williams. I mean, Jalen played, you know, collegiately, so he's got a better understanding of offensive line play and how some of these drills work out. So he's a good resource to use there. Sorry, guys, if this thing's all messed up in the screen, it's because I left my overhead light on. Um, but nonetheless, like, I, it's concerning, guys. I, I mean, I, you know, I don't know where they envision, you know, playing him. He seems like the prior seems like the next guy up is the the swing guard tackle, and he's probably going to be a right guard. And then if something else were to happen, maybe they're going to bounce him over to left tackle. You know, we got a lot of young guys behind these guys that we're going to have to see play now, guys. I mean, they're going to play vitally important roles. We have, you know, Jack Driscoll is going to be one of our, our major backups here. He's going to play a vital role, okay? You got uh, Prince Tega. Prince Tega is probably going to play a major role this season, okay? Nate Herbig. Nate Herbig is going to play a major role this season, okay? That's an undrafted rookie free agent with only one year of experience and two rookies. Then you got Malata. I don't know. Does this give Malata a shot to make the roster? Probably. Will he make the roster? I still think he needs to show something. I, I don't feel comfortable with him out there. I mean, there's no way I would feel comfortable with him playing left tackle right now. I can tell you that. Um, but, you know, anything's, anything's an opportunity now. I mean, everything's an opportunity. I mean, Sua Peta. Sua Peta can make this roster. Luke Jurga. Like, there's a lot of guys right now that could impress and slip on the roster due to an opportunity now being presented to them. I mean... We are in that state and in that stage to where opportunities are now available for offensive linemen to go out there and earn it. My real question here, though, comes with the depth. It, it, you know, this is a very unorthodox season where we haven't had OTAs. We just These guys haven't had the same opportunities to get their bodies ready for the physical wear and tear of a season. And, you know, it, it becomes concerning if you start to sustain more injuries. I think Driscoll would be okay filling in at a guard's position if we really needed him to play right guard. Something happened to Pryor, and he had to play right guard. But, you know, it's the Eagles, The Jeff Stoutland doesn't like to approach the season where if you say, oh, Matt Pryor's our right guard, he doesn't then like to have him to where he's our right guard unless Peters goes down, then we move him to left tackle. That's not the way he likes to operate. And at the same time, Jordan Mulata does not seem ready to me to even – consider to play left tackle even as the backup I, I have major concerns here about him I mean he look here's time for him to shut me up he's got plenty of time to shut me down and shut me up okay no doubt about it there's still time remaining to do that but I mean come on what experience does he really have playing the position what has he really done in camp to impress anybody like it just I'm a little concerned there he got Prince Tega Prince Tega you know played a little left tackle he can play left guard He's raw. Very athletic kid. He's raw, though. I mean, he's still got some development to do. I don't know that he would be ready necessarily either. So, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the depth issue is now starting to become an issue along the offensive line, in my, in my opinion. I do like Nate Herbick. I do like Jack Driscoll. I think those two guys could easily play right guard if you need them to. I think Jack Driscoll could easily play right tackle if you needed them to. I do think that he is there. Um, I'd have to ask Jalen Williams what he thinks about taking a guy like Driscoll, who's never played on the left side ever, and moving him to left tackle in a pinch, could he get the footwork down? Could he be okay with changing his dominant hand and his dominant leg? You know, what does he think about that? I mean, I know the last time he had talked to me, he said that, generally speaking, it's not as large of a process as people think, and it really can be done in about you know, six to eight weeks. I mean, generally speaking, you can get a guy up to speed to where they're 100% ready for that. Um, I, like I said, guys, it's so far out of my element, I, I really, I'd have to defer to Jalen on that, because I really don't know, guys. I mean, I've the only offensive line I've ever played was, like, back in Pop Warner. And it was only a handful of snaps. I've never really been a lineman. Like, that's a hard one. I know how, like, cause like I said, if you show me film, I can break it down for you. I, I know a few things to look for. I know how to evaluate where they are in terms of, you know, their development. But in terms of, like, actually progressing them and coaching them, like, it's just something I've never done. I mean, honestly, if I were to dabble back into coaching, one of the things I probably would stress to myself is the versification of the coaching is to maybe do some more on offensive line and defensive lines, so that way you, you have a more diversified background as a coach. But I don't have that diversity in my background currently, guys. So it, it's really hard to say for me. But all right, guys, these are my thoughts on the on the situation. Um, let me know your thoughts here, guys. What do you think? I mean, I think the line 
by de facto is a little better with Peters at left tackle prior at right guard for this season. But we got some major question marks after this year. Peters is not going to be back after this year. I mean, come on. Like, we know nothing about Dillard come year three. We're, we're still going to be projecting a lot. Um, my hope is the kid gets back at some point this season and can get three, four, five, six games in. That seems to be a stretch. I don't think it's going to happen, but that would be ideal. So that way we have something to judge this kid off of more than just last year's film during that short period of time. But I don't know, guys. <laughs> it's, I, I just I don't know. I mean, you let me know your thoughts down below. You know how we end these videos, guys. We do a little E A G L E S. All right, y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in, man. Peace. See y'all later.